Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks by the New Art School. Our guest today is Pavel Pokutitsky. Welcome, Pavel. Thank you very much for having me on this podcast. It's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure. So tell us about you and your work. Uh, so I'm a, a creative technologist, uh, designer, researcher, speaker, educator, um, uh, connected for many years with the Royal Academy of Arts and the Design Academy Eindhoven here in the Netherlands. My background is in interaction design and technology, uh, but I'm uh, quite an interdisciplinary uh, thinker and doer, uh, often in this field of speculative design, which is quite celebrated here in the Netherlands. Um, I like to engage, so I like to engage with different disciplines, bodies of knowledge, uh, somewhere on the edge of theory, concept development and practice in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. So you, you have to break that down for us. I will. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So tell us how you got into teaching. Um, yeah, it started quite early on when I was a student myself, I, I had to, as an immigrant here to the Netherlands, I, I was looking you know, for some ways to earn money and I was quite skilled, uh, uh, yeah, with, uh, technical things, uh, mostly. And that's how I was giving little courses, uh, uh, to, to different people. And I think this worked, um, and, uh, sort of my career evolved, uh, in that direction, I'm quite uh, like uh, a lot in the academic field, uh, so uh, I guess it works for yeah as a career path as well to to be involved in in in, in this case in higher arts education. So uh, you started from uh, sort of from teaching and then you went into university. Uh... Yeah, I mean, while I was a student myself, I was already, let's say, involved in like some knowledge transfer uh, work. And I think it became a, yeah, something I like to do. I like the social aspect of, you know, engaging with design work, uh, but with, you know, uh, in a, in a, uh, a setting of, of like teaching and learning together with younger people. So uh, I guess this is something what I love to do until this day. Fantastic. And tell us about the work you're doing right now, your projects or what you're working on or what you would like to tell us about what you've worked on in the past as well. Yeah, sure. So a couple of things. Recently, I'm doing an extensive research on uh, new emerging design disciplines. I, I'm, I collected over a hundred of them at different conferences, events, and I'm following new trends. And I kind of broke it down into like a long list of you know, new terms that uh, many designers uh, try to come up with a new t terms, uh, like, I don't know, uh, transition design, regenerative design, pluriversal design, more than human design, <laughs> post speculative design, meta design, pata design, para design, performative design, uh, name it. And I kind of uh, have a, have a list of all this and I'm trying to organize it and sort of see what's, what it's all about and uh, why we have this uh, urgency to come up with new terms. I think this uh, um, signifies the departure from more of a, like Bauhaus logic, like industrial logic of how these disciplines were divided, you know, over graphic design and interior design and product design. Now we have all those crossovers and it's it's quite interesting it's the last decade especially uh it's i, I guess it's all about this uh, uh critical post humanities and uh, sort of looking at more at environmental topics uh and and and, and ethics and um, uh, participatory practices in design so I'm, uh, so this is more of a theoretical side of me where I'm trying to map all of this and distill something and, and learn from it, uh, something from it all and, um, cluster. And then more on a, on a uh, practical side or more in, in practice, I'm, I recently, uh, look into, uh, the, uh, something I like to call Slavic glitch. I, I, you know, I come from Poland and, uh, with, uh, 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 I'm identifying it's not just for the Slavic uh, uh, countries or, 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 or nations, but we were never, when we talk about digital revolution, you know, it's, it, it, was, it was in a way ahistorical. We had never really local references to, you know, to local cultures, to, uh, to something, to, to aesthetics and also functionalities that might be taken from a specific region like this one. Uh, so I'm uh, trying to, uh, that's a bit of a speculative uh, uh, research into how would 
technologies or design how would design look like for digital environments if it if it would be slavic <laughs> so how would how it would look like would we reference certain you know folklore or uh or uh yeah, or, or ways of doing things, um, sort of mapping from a, from a local cultures um, like these. Mm. So it's some kind of a, yeah, uh, uh, I'm trying to, to investigate what it would mean. That's just two examples I could mention for now. <laughs> so you're mapping digital history. Yeah, well, actually, the, the thing is that they, there is no really, I would say, Slavic, there are no Slavic references in, in how interfaces, how... You know, it's very difficult to find uh, r visual references and, and also functionalities that might be considered in this case Slavic. Uh, and I'm trying to think what it, you know, what it would mean if we would have a, a, a Polish uh, OS. <laughs> right, right, right. Fantastic. <laughs> or, 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 or apps that sort of do certain things. And yeah, and it's, it's, it's about, it's about how, you know, digital spaces are uh, kind of generic, homogeneous, uh, uh, glo globalized in that sense. Yeah, and I'm, I'm searching for uh, for some uh, actually some roots. Uh, you know, we we the, the digital immigrants actually came from somewhere. Maybe the digital natives are already. You know, they don't need all this. But <laughs> uh, but I'm um, I'm trying to figure out how we can bring in um, this type of yeah. Uh, references back maybe into the digital spaces and i it's a long longer journey <laughs> any any findings so far yeah i did a workshop with uh with um uh, with uh, sonia goretzka a, a designer uh, uh, also based here in the netherlands we did a recently a workshop in work in warsaw uh two weeks workshop in warsaw with a group of students uh, who happen to come from Ukraine, Belarus, and you know many Slavic countries? Uh, so uh, there are some dis interesting discoveries. One of them is, for instance, a concept of a computer game that would be, uh, you know, uh, referencing the, the the spaces and and, and, and stories from um, uh, from Poland in this case, uh, or or other Slavic countries. Yeah, great. To take you back to the to the names, so which of the names for, for the different design disciplines you found that are substantial, and which do you think that are kind of made up just to, to sound nice? Hmm, very good question. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I don't think I'm in a position to. Yeah, you know, of course, I have some of more favorite ones. Uh, yeah, I am enjoying. I'm enjoying the. The vocabulary, <laughs> the creativity in language. Uh, around it. And actually my position in all this is, I think we don't need these adjectives be, before design. <laughs> so I, I quite like what, for instance, Design uh, Academy did in here in Eindhoven. They, they don't have departments. They have, it's just design. And then you have different studios and you can go from yeah. like different, yeah, like explore all this ideas so this is where i think where i stand i think uh but i am yeah i'm very much let's say as a thinker i i like the the, the yeah the field of critical post humanities where you have this uh you know the environmental perspective the the, the human and the sort of artificial creations uh we we made i i do like to be let's say in this post-human uh space a lot um uh, but yeah, I cannot think, I think I cannot mention and associate myself with any of these terms specifically. <laughs> so how do these findings uh, inform your teaching? How do you bring this back into your teaching? Yeah. So first of all, I do inform my students about this variety of possibilities and that helps them, I think, also identify the, you know, how, how large it is and how important it is for, uh, for young designers to stay very open to very different bodies of knowledge. Uh, you know, uh, because all of this is relatable to, you know, to spaces, to environments, to, uh, to human condition, to, social topics, political awareness, uh, all of that. So I guess, um, yeah, it's basically turning the design education and also a deep, deeper thinking like, uh, uh, and, and doing of course, mm. uh, and engaging with these different 
interdisciplinary crossovers. Um, so yeah, so if I you know talk to students in you know product design or in uh, fashion design, whatever, I was like yeah. to illustrate. Yeah, look, we are in this field, but um, and there are these other ideas, and maybe actually on this edge of this different discipline, something new is emerging that is interesting to look into. So what do you find the biggest challenges are for students uh, for employment right now? Yeah, so I uh, I think it differs per per country. Uh, yeah. For instance, I'm quite uh, spoiled in here <laughs> because in the Netherlands still the, de the design uh, field is quite like subsidized. There's like a public funding going into research and this type of speculative design. Uh, so a lot of also young people may sort of uh, find ways to to do that, but it's often not very applied <laughs> work, mm -hmm. um, grounded uh, in the market or actual uh, uh, urgent needs. Um, so it's a different situation elsewhere. Uh, and, and of course, uh, I always, yeah, what, what can I say? I always uh, promote or stimulate entrepreneurship. So basically, yeah, self-organization of uh, young people towards new, uh, uh, yeah, new practices and 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 and, work, and jobs. Um, you know, finding employment uh, is often problematic because if you want to be progressive and uh, you know alternative and disruptive, you know, like it's a, it's not always easy within the the jobs offered uh, out there and also again, defined according to some market like strategies and like, uh, position. So if I'm, if I'm in this, if I'm, if I'm myself excited about all those new emerging speculative, you know, design, yeah. uh, uh, practices, then I think, yeah, when it comes to finding jobs, yeah, I think it's, it, it's more about starting something new, uh, and maybe not necessarily, yeah, finding a job, uh, you know, in an, in the industry as it is, uh, I think. Uh, but of course, it's not black and white uh, story. And there are also examples of people who manage to push this more experimental approach in 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 uh, more. Say, yeah, I mean, what I tell my students is so that's mm -hmm. what I tell my students is that the job finds you. You don't find the job, so you got to be up to the level of the job. So. Of course, whether you someone to create something new or, or, or goes for something existing, they still they still are matched to their to their abilities yeah. and, and competencies. Yeah, I think it pays off eventually to uh, be persistent and having uh, have a vision, uh, you know, and a sort of kind of identity as designer in terms of you know the capacity capacity to to uh, go into new fields or new ideas uh, that will eventually pay off. So I always uh, yeah and in, in also educational uh, environments, uh, academic, I try to um, teach that or like, you know, uh, uh, cherish that in, in people that, you know, to find the uh, individual voice and, and vision and uh, an identity also uh, within this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you find are the biggest challenges uh, in, 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 your, in your daily work? In your, in, your, in your daily work for in education? Mm-hmm. Well, um, not all institutions are, uh, um, I don't know, capable or, or know yet how to create spaces for inter interdisciplinary discourse. I think uh, that there's this department, often this departmental logic uh, out there and certain power structures within the disciplines. And I don't really like that for me. Um, yeah, I would break it down a bit and make it a bit more fluid and 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 organic. Uh, yeah, there are certain things that, for instance, design schools don't look much into. They don't look so much into ethics or uh, actually uh, knowledge coming from from uh, yeah other f like scientific fields. Uh, there is uh, yeah, but even things like. In within the arts, you know, like m music, you know, like yeah. you know, composers are also a bit of designers and the pop artists, you know, create amazing stuff, uh, you know, with with their with their with their music that's visual and it's. So I'm, I'm just asking where where is then uh, 
music or pop culture, you know, within, for instance, design field. And the problem is that, you know, if you either go to a music school or you go to an art school or design school, yeah. and it's very little, very little uh, interaction between uh, these faculties. And I really don't like that. So that I think is the biggest challenge that we are, uh, we are seeing, like, for instance, what I was saying at the beginning with all these new fields emerging, that's happening uh, in research or uh, individual uh, uh, thinkers, designers, they come up with these terms, but the institutions are really slow in adapting to that. And uh, they are yeah, often in, in quite old structures and, and uh, yeah, they are not um, fast enough to pick to, to do something with this, to, uh, to translate these new developments into curricula. Yeah. So if you, if you had a magic one, if you had, what would you change if you could just change things like with, easily? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would, I think I would, uh, of course there must be some, uh, some continuous line throughout the studies, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I would quite break down the departmental structures uh, within design education. That's first thing. Uh, second uh, way, yeah. Yeah. yes, that yeah. I think. I mean, they mm. could exist a little bit, but there needs to be more possibility for students uh, and also teachers to to meet each other and uh, you know. Uh, go to different different silos <laughs> yeah. as they as they as they as they learn um and then um uh yeah i i would say some places around the world could benefit i mean i'm talking about uh higher arts educational institutions some can could benefit from more space for experiments, speculative design, these types of uh, fields, but also uh, the ones like here in the Netherlands, you know, we are so much in this uh, speculative design framework that actually it's interesting to look at post speculative practice. So how can we, dis how, how can we put all the speculative uh, design fiction type of work into actually something tangible and meaningful uh, for uh, yeah regular users or uh, you know uh, the, the people uh, so i i also quite i'm also as much as i enjoy that type of um, spaces i also i'm also critical in, i mean it's not good when it becomes a white cube uh, kind of um you know, just pieces for discourse and reflection. I think we we can do a bit more. So uh, go from this, again, speculative, experimental, critical uh, design um, uh, practices towards uh, something a bit more applied or tangible. Uh, and that's not easy. Often institutions, as I said, here in the Netherlands, they are, uh, well, they get public funding and uh, there is, uh, there are resources to do this, but then like not, but then like the step towards, um, yeah, implementing it somewhere for longer, sustaining this, uh, making things actually happen in, in the industry, uh, that's a bit more difficult. So that is a challenge uh, as well. And, uh, so more, more, uh, let's say more, um, uh, how to say a reality check is needed okay. out there yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> from the, you know, these research theoretical experimental spaces with the, I think there's so, the, the balance is a bit, it's often a bit out of balance. It's too much either, too theory. Yeah, either exactly, exactly. It's about finding the balance, but also there is a, there are also places where it's just practice without reflection and criticality. And that's also not good. So, you know, it's about how do we balance the two? Yeah, exactly. But it seems to me that the greatest fear of those uh, in theory is finding. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, yes. And it, it seems that we want, mm -hmm. we want to keep on researching. Yeah, I think so. Um, so that's true. Yeah. I, I am, I have these two, flows in me and uh i i always when it's too much of the speculation then i'm yeah. like okay how but at, at the same time do not be hypocritical <laughs> you know i am quite uh you know uh, most of the time i'm i'm really enjoying this uh spaces of academia where i can do this and i don't necessarily need to verify you know whatever we do in this yeah. academic field with the real world 
but at the same time i'm i'm aware i'm i'm aware of it and uh, I, that's what i would also for, for myself for the field i'd like to change uh, as much as we can in in the given time mm -hmm. wonderful how can our listeners and viewers find you uh google <laughs> uh, uh, i you will find you know other places where i give talks and interviews and 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 things like that uh so i guess there, yeah i guess this will be it <laughs> okay yeah uh what advice would you like to leave us with ha huh. mm, uh, i for don't know students, for keep, for teachers for for, for education for... i don't know keep, keep calm and carry on <laughs> <laughs> with everything we've discussed so yeah. um move on to new uh new fields of knowledge, new, new practices, new ideas, yet remember, um, yeah, that we are on a mission here, you know, like designers, uh, I mean, the world is our, in our hands. You know? so, <laughs> so it's more than just talking, I guess, or more than just having good, good ideas. It's about, uh, yeah, bringing it into, into reality. That's not easy. Um, uh, but, uh, that's why we are doing it. Absolutely. With this belief that we, we one day can, can make something happen. Absolutely. Well, Pavel, thank you so much for coming and hope to see you next year, of course, in Design Education Forum in, on, in September. Keep in touch with the podcast and uh, thank you. Thank you, Letters. Take care. Bye.